Hello, my dear gardening friends. Today in this video, we are going to talk about planting roses in our gardens as hedges. And I understand a lot of people, when they talk about roses, they imagine right, right away these wonderful uh, shrubs and bushes in our garden. And not often people think about roses as hedges. And I believe that in the United States, where I live, Connecticut, Zone 7, rose hedges are underutilized. So today we are talking about rose hedges. And by the way, you will find me these days, for the next maybe several weeks, you will find me sitting in the garden a lot. The reason is, yesterday I was playing soccer with my kids, and of course I wanted to show off that I know the latest soccer tricks. Not only my kids can play soccer, and I really damaged my ankle. So I'm grounded for I don't know how many weeks, so you will see me limping in the garden. But I'm living and nothing is broken, which is great. So back to roses as hedges. What qualities do roses need to make an excellent hedge? There are four qualities which we are looking in the roses. The first quality would be a great branching habit of the bush, meaning bushes are thick, they, have, they create a lot of branches, uh, they are resilient, they are ready to grow, divide their stems. This way roses will form a nice full hedge, because that's what we are looking in any hedge, right? The second feature, which we would demand from our roses in hedges, would be a tough variety. A survivor rose, which will survive with tough competition, because in the hedge we are going to plant our roses fairly close together. Our roses wouldn't have all this wonderful space to enjoy and bask in the sun and enjoy all this, uh, you know, all this space to spread its wings. Rose will compete with another rose on both sides. So variety has to be tough and resilient. The third feature would be we want to see masses of disease-resistant foliage. Again, roses in shrubs would be tightly planted, there wouldn't be a lot of airflow, and our roses would be really prone to all sorts of uh, mildew and parasites in case they are, uh, let's say, black spot, um, have a tendency to have black spot more. So we wouldn't want to use those roses and uh, have, at the end of the season, have this uh, bare hedge at the bottom because all the leaves fell down. We need a tough, resistant foliage which will cover the bush from the bottom up and will form a well-branched uh, and a well-balanced hedge for us. And the fourth feature would be we need roses which are free flowering. Either it's a once flowering uh, rose uh, which will be flowering in the middle of summer, or it's a repeat flowering variety. But it needs to be willing to create wonderful blooms for us all the time. This way we can enjoy those blooms on our hedges. And of course, rose hedge, the difference between rose hedge and other formal hedges would be that rose hedges are not very formal. You can't really keep very tight boundaries. It would be an informal hedge. And because the hedge would be informal, we want the foliage to be sturdy, to be attractive, and for the rose to be free flowering, to delight us with blooms for a long season. Now let's talk about the purpose which our rose hedge will fulfill in our gardens. We can plant roses as low hedges, and of course smaller varieties of roses would be appropriate to that. And we would plant them approximately 20-28 inches apart. Uh, this, this is a, a good uh, distance to plant roses, small varieties. We can design rose border as a tall rose border. And small um, uh, rose hedge is suitable for small spaces, small country spaces, and bigger rose hedge is, of course, uh, is more appropriate for bigger spaces. And those hedges we would plant approximately three, four feet apart to give bigger rose varieties, which will make that hedge more space to grow, because bigger roses need more space to grow, of course. Also, we can plant our roses as uh, a barrier for all sorts of wildlife not to go through. And the best rose for that would be Rosa rugosa, 
and I grew that rose for some years in front of my garden. It's a, it's a very healthy rose and what I like about that rose, it has a very beautiful foliage, totally disease resistant, nothing touches that rose. Rosa Rogosa is a beautiful thing to grow if you have space for her and you're ready to fight suckers because she suckers a lot. One thing about uh, Rosa Rogosa, you cannot trim her. A lot of people don't know it. Rosa Rugosa really doesn't like trimming and all sorts of uh, uh, sprays. Rosa Rugosa will really dislike if you will get her with all your sprays which you're using in your garden. So no spraying Rosa Rugosa, no cutting her and she would be beautiful as an informal hedge because usually our formal hedge are constantly trimmed into shape. In case with Rosa Rugosa she will be informal you would be taking care to control suckers but at the same time you will create this um, uh, hedge which is uh, really thorny and tough for rabbits on all and all other um, unwanted um, wildlife to come into your garden another suggestion which I, which I have for you when you're planning it's more about the design of the hedge when you're planning your hedge and you're buying you know you need this amount of roses this amount of space I would advise you not to go for different varieties and why is that because different varieties have a different growth habit and eventually one variety will try to overtake another oh a squirrel so one variety will try to overtake another and then the weaker variety will slowly become even more weaker and will disappear from the hedge eventually so you don't want that competition if you want to do that still you want to go ahead and buy different varieties and plant them as a hedge make sure that you control the big guys and weak guys with the help of pruning for example look at this my uh, rose here we have two um, lady of shallots here and that rose you can see how it moves this way right that rose is bigger because this rose is a little bit more in shade so she is weaker and i can see how this here look at this this rose is just laying her wings on this poor thing here, her neighbor, and she is slowly taking over, you know, because she has more strength, she has more sun, and she's just getting it because she can get it. And these, keep in mind, these are two same varieties, so their strength is the same. Meanwhile, if you plant a different variety close to each other, the takeover can happen much faster. I would be very careful about the color. The general recommendation is the, the softer colors are better for the hedge because you will have a lot of color in your garden. And if that color is very strong, uh, very uh, bright, very, uh, you know, very intense, then you will have a lot of it in the garden. And I'm not sure if you would be happy with so much color presence. So, do you, if you want to do that, do your homework and see with which color you can live for a long period of time. And usually softer colors are recommended for hedges. Softer pinks, softer oranges, which will blend with the landscape and won't be so annoying eventually, maybe. Just imagine spending so much time and energy planting your hedge and then waiting for it to start, finally starting growing and then you don't like the color. So that's also an important thing. Uh, if you make all those decisions, make sure you think it through and you choose something which will definitely not be annoying later in several years for you. The maintenance of uh, rose hedge is the same as any uh, roses. And of course, you're not going to use climbers or rumblers for a rose hedge uh, unless you plant them on a strong support. And by the way, support might be needed for taller roses because they might fall under the rain, not fall, but bend their heads under, after the rain. And you will have this widened uh, hedge which might close a lot of uh, uh, pass, uh, pass away um, space. So, Keep in mind, if you want a taller hedge, you might need to install some sort of a netting or some sort of a permanent support in between. But for smaller varieties, for smaller hedges, you don't need to do that. 
So the maintenance of the hedge, rose hedge, would be approximately the same as uh, any other roses in our garden. We use uh, shears, if you want to sh use shears or you want to use electrical uh, cutters to make the hedge nice and even. Um, and then you go in with the help of secateurs and you take dead and damaged wood. Basically the same what we do with any rose in the garden. You will do it on your rose hedge, but with, you know, a bigger space you have to do it. So that's it about this video. My magnificent Lady of Shalott keeps blooming. Have a wonderful day. Happy gardening and I will see you next time.